Hello guys, what's up? Thank you so much for joining me in this video. This is Mortaza and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, A Coder Journey. Uh, uh, first and foremost, if you are watching this you know, video on my YouTube channel, please make sure you subscribe and activate that notification bell. If you are watching this video on other platforms, like for example on LinkedIn, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and pay me a visit there. In this video, I am going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is uh, code snippets. Uh, code snippets uh, help us to be more productive. They help us to write uh, code uh, faster and also, you know, uh, better. Uh, we will see why. And uh, from time to time, if you are anything like me, you know, we uh, feel that we are writing uh, re 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 repeated code, right? We are writing some piece of code repeatedly. And sometimes we need to refer to other, for example, code files or a notepad file, something like that, and take that code and then uh, bring it here in Visual Studio and use it again and again, right? So this is a little bit tedious, right? What if we could reuse that piece of repetitive code without, uh, you know, uh, without leaving our IDE, without leaving Visual Studio? This is something that we can achieve uh, using code snippets. And if you have, you know, the experience of working with Visual Studio, I think you have already, uh, you know, used the uh, code snippets that come with uh, Visual Studio. For example, here in this simple console application, we can, for example, write CW and then press tab twice. And this console write line will, you know, be printed here for us. So this is a simple code snippet that Visual Studio offers out of the box. But for example, we do not have the CL or console read line or CR, something like that. We do not have the counterpart. So what if we could create that for ourselves, right? For ourselves, we will do that. And also uh, here, for example, we have created a program, uh, a person class, right? Uh, let's just make this public. And as you might already know, for example, using this prop uh, code snippet, right? We can uh, create uh, different types of properties. We can have a simple auto property. We can have a property with a backfield, right? So again, these are all uh, nice and all, but what if we could also create our own, uh, you know, code snippets? And that is something which we can easily do. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, in, uh, um, in the end, you will be able to uh, generate your uh, code snippets and use them in your day-to-day -day coding uh, tasks. Now, in order to start creating a code snippet in my, you know, uh, console application or in Visual Studio, doesn't matter. We're going to, you know, create a new file. We're going to call this file, for example, we're going to create, let's say, uh, a text file. And then we're going to uh, save this file. Let me save this. I have saved the file using the snippet extension. This is very important. You can name your file anything you want. I have chosen the name CR. CR means console read line, right? And remember, the file needs to be saved using the snippet extension. And now I am going to paste a simple, uh, you know, uh, a simple, uh, uh, template here which we can use to you know create our code snippet and as you can see here uh, we have an XML document right so uh, we could also create this uh, file using the XML uh, file template uh, and then we have different tags for example here we have the header tag here we can you know uh, create a title we can create an author we can have the description the shortcut is very important so we're gonna say C are, you know, the shortcut is actually uh, what uh, we use to invoke that, uh, for example, code snippet. So for, for example, console read right line, the shortcut is CW, right? So we want CR as well, right? We want CR to kind of uh, console that read line to use console that read line. So this is the shortcut. And then we can have the title. Title is something that you can use. This is not the shortcut that we are going to use. This is just something like a name, right? So I'm going to say this snippet uh, prints out console read line, 
right? And then we can have the author. You can put in your own name, right? You can have, uh, let me uh, take this, bring it here. I'm gonna uh, make the title a little bit shorter, right? And then the description, the shortcut, the header, and here uh, uh, for the, you know, uh, this is the actually the most important part, right? You have the language, which we are going to say C sharp, right? Because this is going to be a C sharp code snippet. And this is the uh, part that you put in your, uh, for example, uh, code that you want to have. So I'm going to say console that read line, right? And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring it here. I'm going to write it here. This is the, uh, you know, uh, code that you want to uh, print using this CR shortcut. Now I'm going to save this file and the next step will be to import this code snippet in my uh, code editor. Now in order to be able to use this snippet that we just created, you need to copy the file that we just saved in the location we are going to talk about. This is the location if you are using the, uh, Visual Studio 2022, right? You need to go to your, you know, documents, right? The username documents, then Visual Studio 2022, and then code snippets. And here, there will be a folder called Visual C Sharp. You're going to go to that, and you're going to, you know, double click on my code snippet. And then you are going to put the code snippet file that you have here, right? So this is the file that we just created, and I can give it, uh, you know, uh, take, take a, another look at it in Visual Studio. Uh, here, uh, as you can see, we are still uh, we we uh, also got the color coding after we you know save the file with snippet uh, extension and then we reopen it in Visual Studio. Uh, and uh, this is now ready to be used. Uh, you do not need to anything else. You do not, for example, need to reload your project or close Visual Studio and then open it again. You can directly go to program.cs and then write. CR, as you can see here, uh, console read line. This is the title that we said. This is the description. This snippet prints out console read line, right? And then we have a note, tap twice to insert the CR snippet. And then I'm going to, you know, double tap. And this is the function that gets printed out for us. So this is a very, you know, simple code snippet without any parameters, without any, uh, you know, method parameters or any placeholders that you can specify. And then uh, let me go to this person.cs class. And here, some of the one of my other, you know, favorite uh, snippets that I have created for myself is this method uh, snippet, which just, you know, uh, prints uh, a method for me. Uh, and if you uh, watch closely, I can press tab to just, you know, jump between these different placeholders. I can specify, for example, I can jump between these different placeholders, as I was saying, right, using the tab key. And then I can start, you know, for example, write the different, for example, I can change the access modifier. I can say private. I can change the method name to, I don't know, uh, print information, right? Uh, so this is, uh, this code snippet is a little bit, you know, more advanced than this code snippet because here we have placeholders that we can change, right? So we're going to take a look at this code snippet and then we're going to talk about the different, you know, options that I have uh, used in this code snippet. This is the code snippet file I was talking about, C sharp method. I'm going to, you know, open this in Visual Studio. So as you can see, this, you know, code snippet is a little bit more involved uh, uh, with more options. We're going to talk about them so that you guys can better, you know, use them uh, in your own uh, coding. As uh, uh, before, we have the header tag, we have title, we have author, we have description, and also the shortcut, right? And then in the snippet, we have uh, the language C sharp, and this is the code that gets printed out. But as you can see here, we have, uh, you know, dollar signs uh, at the beginning and, you know, at the end of these different, you know, tokens, placeholders, if you will. These uh, helps us, these uh, dollar signs, you know, help us to turn these into tokens that we can change and then we are going to introduce these you know in this section this literal element so we need to first add the you know dollar sign here right 
and then we're gonna declare these in this internal you know a literal i'm sorry literal uh, part so for each one of these we are going to declare a literal node and then for each literal we're gonna have an id and we're gonna have a default value so for example the id will be of course the id that we set here of course without the you know dollar signs access modifier the default value is public right we have the return type right the return type the default value is void right and then we've got method name right the default value is method name we have parameters right parameter type and we have the parameter name so if you have a code snippet where you want to be able to press tab to jump between these different tokens and change them right you need to add uh, dollar signs right at the beginning and at the end and then you are going to have a declarations node right and in these declaration nodes you're going to have uh, several literals for each literal you're going to have an id and a default value and then you're going to set the default value for all of these you know uh, different tokens now let me give you another example of one of the code snippets that i have declared for myself here in this file i'm going to get rid of this class get rid of this class and i'm going to say db context and then press tab twice and as you can see here uh, i will get a simple uh, you know ef db context right and then i can come and you know change the different placeholders as you can see here for example for db set i'm gonna say uh db set of person right and then i'm gonna press enter and as you saw when i changed this this one the name of the property also changed right so let me uh press uh let me let me get rid of this one more time and show you guys what i am talking about watch very closely whenever i change this this one also changes right so this is again something very useful when you want to for example have a class where you are going to have a property and that property is used in multiple places instead of going to those places and change that for example name one by one you can change it once and then you can press enter and this one also gets updated so how can we achieve that so let me open this db context file and talk about it this is the code snippet which i was talking about i have created this for myself in order to create a db context class very quickly let me open it in visual studio and we will talk about it so this is the file i was referring to db context uh, in this file something uh, which uh, you know was different was that whenever i typed for example person here this token also get gets updated and uh, as you can see again very uh, similar to our last snippet we have the title author description shortcut then we have the code here and as i told you we have some placeholders which we are going to surround using the double dollar sign right and then in the declarations part we are going to create you know different literals as you can see here i have used this token twice so both for the uh, you know type parameter of this db set and also for the name of my property i have used this entity token this entity placeholder right so this means that whenever i change this this one will also get updated because they refer to the same thing right and the default value for this entity is of course entity right and also the context has the default value of context this is something which you can also take advantage of so you can use you know this uh, entity uh, or this uh, token multiple times now let me give you another example of one of my other code snippets that i have created for myself uh, when i want to you know develop web, web applications using razor pages sometimes i need to create tag helpers so i have created this code snippet for myself and please take a look at the namespaces right whenever i use this code snippet and press tab twice look at the you know namespace as you can see this namespace was added automatically whenever i you know uh, use this code snippet right so again there are of course uh, some tokens some placeholders but i want to specifically talk about this 
uh, namespace. So how can we achieve that? How can we add a namespace to a code file whenever we are using a code snippet? By the way, this is the code snippet I was just uh, using, right? So I'm going to open this in Visual Studio and we're going to take a look at it. So as you can see here, again, we have uh, the title, author, description, and shortcut. We have the code, right? We have the uh, declarations part, right? We have the dif different literals. Here I have created, for example, this uh, token. Also, I have uh, used uh, this, you know, target attribute. I have this name and so on. But the important thing here, the thing that, you know, is different from our last code snippet is this imports node or element so using the imports element right you can import the namespace that you want to be added to your code file whenever you uh, use this code snippet so here i have said you know what i have an imports you know element and i have to import this namespace right microsoft asp.net core razor tag helpers so this means that whenever i you know use this tag helper shortcut to uh, you know use this code this namespace will be added to the code file automatically right so let me get rid of this and then I'm gonna press tab twice and as you can see this using statement is gonna be printed out as well so whenever you want to have a code snippet and you want to import a namespace whenever you are using this you know code snippet you're going to have to create an imports node and then import the namespace you want. That was it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you are watching this video on my channel, A Coder Journey, please make sure you subscribe. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed watching it. Uh, uh, and also, you know, subscribe, uh, activate that notification bell. If you've got anything to say, if you want to know more about code snippets, you can you know leave a comment and also if you are you know watching this video on uh, other platforms like linkedin linkedin please uh, share it with your friends also you know make sure you pay a visit to my channel uh, a coder's journey thank you so much for joining me again and for watching this video till the very end i hope you've enjoyed watching it and go out there uh, you know create some snippets for yourself I think uh, uh, it's, uh, they, they will help you to be more productive and write better code, cleaner code. And, you know, uh, they're very fun to use, actually. I use them a lot. Thank you so much again. Till later. Bye-bye.